have. Uh, for more, let's welcome back in our friends uh, from the Washington Times. Kelly Sadler is here and National Vi Advisory Board member for Project 21 and radio host Christopher Arps is with us. Let me just sh set this up and show you what Joe Biden said yesterday. Take a look. Representative Jackie, are you here? Where's Jackie? I didn't think she was, she was going to be here to help make this a reality. All right, so Representative Jackie Belorsky wasn't there. She passed away in August in a car accident. Joe Biden was invited to the funeral. Uh, she was in Congress when he was vice president. That issue, hunger in America, near and dear to her heart, uh, a really tragic story. Uh, Kelly, what bothers me about that is that the president didn't have the presence of mind to correct himself or somehow apologize or walk that back. He just kept going, which leads me to believe that he didn't connect the dots, that Jackie Walorski is no longer with us. She's sadly been dead for two months. Yeah, no, you're absolutely right. The president is clearly unwell, whether it's, you know, trying to make remarks to a person who's passed away in the room or if it's not being able to find his way off stage. Um, just the other day, he was literally led by a blind man at an auto, at an auto show um, and, 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 and then just looked lost. Uh, when there was no one to guide him up on stage. We need to start asking some serious questions about the president's health and his mental acuity, and the mainstream media needs to start asking these questions as well, because yesterday it was extremely apparent that the president of the United States was not physically, that he was physically there in the room, but he was not there mentally. Right. Yeah, Chris, you know, I was looking at the media reports yesterday, and they covered it, the NBC News, lots of media outlets, but there weren't any questions. It was really just, here's what happened, here's what the press secretary said. You know, I know we're not doctors here, but I do wonder, when is the media, when are some people, other than conservatives, Republicans, going to start asking these questions? Because we know if this was a Republican president, this would be the number one agenda on the Democrats list. Yeah, and, and Allison, exactly. I just want to add to that, Chris. Excuse me just for one second. I, forget about just, I, I think conservative media, forget that angle. We're just people. Right. And, and I don't have to be a doctor to tell you that what I'm seeing is, is not right. All right? The president is not well. That's based on watching him for the last 20 months. That's what I'm basing it on. Yeah. And quite frankly, I think that's fair. Well, yeah, and to add to that, Chris, if you look at video, even when Joe Biden was campaigning, the difference that we've seen since he came into office, I mean, you don't have to be an expert to see these things that are happening. Yeah, I think the president's gaffe yesterday, it showed me two things. One is that he is not well cognitively, and two, it tells me that the staff is not really keeping him in the loop. You think that they would have told him, uh, reminded him that uh, Jackie Walorski is, is no longer with us and won't be part of this ceremony. You know, remember when President Trump was, uh, was, was president, we heard talk of the 25th Amendment all the time. Right. We, we mm -hmm. had the example of when he slipped, uh, was walking very gingerly because he had some brand new shoes on during ICE. If you remember after the January 6th uh, situation, um, there was talk that the president was despondent and, and maybe the nuclear football should be taken away from him. And there was talk of a 25th Amendment uh, talk then. This president, he's shaking hands with invisible people, forgetting that people have passed, and we hear crickets. Such a good point. You know, we've interviewed Donald Trump several times. He clearly still has all his marbles. Um, I think part of the reason that Joe Biden doesn't do interviews is because maybe he doesn't. Um, I, I would love to hear what a, a, a doctor, a specialist on dementia, would have to say about what he's seeing here from the American president. So, okay, so stop picking on the president. Fine, I hear that. He's going to be 80 years old next month. Here's why it matters. Think about what Vladimir Putin is literally doing today, stuff that didn't happen under uh, Donald Trump. Uh, today, Vladimir Putin is going to annex four territories from Ukraine and make them part of Russia, officially. So 15 percent of all the land in Ukraine, a country the size of Texas, is now in the eyes of Vladimir Putin going to belong to Russia. Vladimir Putin is doing that today, and we've got a president who can't remember, you know, somebody that passed away two months ago, tragically. Um, another part of this story is the gas prices angle. Uh, Kelly, hugely political. Here's Joe Biden yesterday on possible price gouging. They're setting this up for the midterm elections. Take a listen. And if you forgive me, I want to add one more warning. That's warning to the oil and gas industry executives. Do not, let me repeat, do not. Do not use this as an excuse to raise gasoline prices or gouge the American people. 
Kelly, mark my words, that's exactly what Democrats are going yeah. to do over the next 40 days. They're going to say that because of Hurricane Ian, gas prices are going up. Here's the numbers. Uh, last Thursday, gas average in this country, 367 a gallon. Today, this morning, 378. So it's gone up 11 cents in seven days. Gas prices are on the rise again. Yes, and they're going to go on the rise because uh, Joe Biden's been draining from the Strategic uh, Petroleum Reserve uh, all summer long, a million barrels a day, practically. It's at its lowest level since 1984, and that is set to expire uh, in October. So when that goes out of effect, when he stops draining it dry, uh, basically oil prices will rebound and they will go up. But you're absolutely right, Rob. Uh, he is setting this up to blame the oil refineries, the oil companies. I don't know why he didn't blame orange juice, you know, makers, because the price of orange juice is also going to go up because right. of the hurricane. This is just a natural ebb and flow uh, during hurricane season. But you better believe that he doesn't want to blame anyone uh he wants to blame everyone else but himself. Yeah. Good, good point, by the way, about the orange <laughs> juice, by the way. Yeah, we, uh, mm -hmm. But I think um, the American people are fine with that. They expect that after right. something yeah. like this. Well, yeah. exactly and, right. And we talked to Seth Denson in the last hour, and he said, look, this this has, is going to have very little to do with gas prices because you think about the amount of oil, uh, you know, in Florida. Also, um, there was yesterday gasoline prices. This comes from the um, a spokesperson from the Oil Trade Association of American Petroleum Institute said gasoline prices are determined by market forces, not individual companies. Chris, so they're already pushing back saying, whoa, 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 this is not what we do. This is not why gas prices could potentially go up. And the administration is basically contradicting their argument. The reason that they released oil from the strategic oil reserve was to put more supply into the market to lower price. Yeah. So it, it, it's you're contradicting your argument if you're saying that oil companies can willy-nilly raise prices if, if they want to and market forces don't have any anything to do with it. There, it's a big contradiction. All right, less than a minute left. Just want to play you uh, some sound from Don Lemon. This is why CNN is struggling, by the way. He's got somebody from NOAA on the air to talk about the hurricane, and he wants to talk about climate change. Take a look. Can you tell us what this is and what effect the climate change has on this phenomenon? Well, we can come back and talk about climate change uh, at a later time. You said you want to talk about climate change, but what, what effect does climate change have on this phenomenon that that is happening now because it seems these storms are intensifying that's the question here. i don't think you can link climate change to any one event okay. on the whole on the cumulative uh, climate change uh, may be making storms worse uh, but uh, to link it to any one event um, I, I would caution against that all right kelly don lemon's going to be competing with us in the mornings uh, <laughs> starting in about a month but in about 10 <laughs> seconds your reaction to that I just love it when Don Lemon gets shot down on his own show for promoting falsehoods. Happening a lot happening lately, often. by the way. You see that yes. Hillary Fordwich, yeah. uh, friend of the show, that segment? Yeah. Um, all right, Kelly Sadler, uh, Chris Arps, appreciate it this morning. Great having you on again.